Hello, this is Leech83, how we doing? Welcome to this new Celtic vlog. Now, whether you have came from this is Celtic.net or Celtic News Now or any other Celtic medium for that matter, or whether you're already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I appreciate you taking the time to come and watch this video. Today, we want to talk about a couple of different things, but I have a kind of hot topic, and obviously, the title to the video is Aiden McGeady. Now, at the moment, there's a few rumblings online about our potential. Uh, wild card for the next game that we have in Europe, which is obviously against Hapel Bersheva in the Champions League playoff. Now, personally, I feel like Aidan McGeady would just be that little extra twist. Um, now, I'm not saying he's needed like completely. I'm not saying that's the, that's another area we need to work on or anything like that because over the piece of the season, we're going to have Patrick Roberts on one side and he's got Sinclair on the other. But I just feel like Sometimes you just need to kind of keep your options open. And with the unknown over the situation of a Gary McKay Stephen at the moment, and also by the looks of things of how James Forrest is playing a kind of more central role, I feel that we also need to get some cover in for both wings. Now, Aiden can play on the left and can play on the right. You know the rest of the words to the song. And should we then look at a player who's available on a free transfer who is kind of versatile in that way, but at the same time, you've got like a kind of love him or hate him kind of vibe with a lot of Celtic fans. Personally, I I thought he was an exceptional talent. I was gutted when he left. Um, I felt like the reasons behind it all were not right. Um, but at the same time, it's the player's choice, isn't it? So it's up to him. But it's obviously, it's been lucrative, but it's not been successful, if that makes any sense. It's, if you judge your success on two different things. Do you judge your success as a career um, by how much money you made or by how many titles and how many badges and how many medals that you have at the end of it? So it all depends on how you judge yourself um, as to how successful Eddie McGeady's career has been. Um, but at the same time, he's made a fucking crap ton of money. Now, he's only 30 year old, which isn't old at all in regards to football and careers nowadays um, with players playing well into their late 30s. So would it be too much of a gamble to kind of give him a kind of two-year deal on a like kind of reasonable salary? He can come back home. He can spend more time in Scotland with his with his family. It's one of those type of things. That if you offer him the carrot, would he take it? Now, maybe in the meantime, between me making this video and uploading this video, it may have something may have already happened, or he may have went to another club. But if that has happened, then fair to us. But at the same time, I thought I'd make this little like kind of topic video where you can kind of generate a little bit of debate and you can tell me what you think because I've had a few people kind of rumble about Gary McKay Stephen in some of my comments on the videos the person I think Gary McKay Stephen is absolutely outstanding he's a talent and a half now whether he needs to go on loan to kind of keep that talent going that remains to be seen personally though at the tail end of last season when he was getting played through the middle and drifting out to the right exchange between himself and Patrick Roberts he was outstanding and that's kind of happened with James Forrest James Forrest has kind of jumped into that position and he's doing it now and being outstanding and that's where we kind of need to need to be careful of what we do because obviously we had, we don't want to have too many people in the same position we need to kind of cut the squad down but at the same time we need to have like a good mix and a good um, options for selection you can't just go with the same 11 guys week in week out with the same seven guys on the bench and expect them all to stay fit all through the season it's just not going to happen we need to have a few different options and that's where as i say i think Eden might be the one now apologies for taking four minutes to talk about that we will talk about other things just in a couple of minutes or for a couple of minutes we will talk obviously about the game against hearts where we got a 2-1 victory thanks to I've not just thanks to Scott Sinclair for getting on the end of Griffiths' wonderful run and wonderful pass into the box, but thanks mainly to two things. Firstly, Brendan Rodgers, tactically outstanding to go, not like his normal setup to start the game, and then to go defensive, attacking, defensive, was just was just outstanding. It was just was. Like a couple, like last season or the season before, it just wouldn't have happened. We just wouldn't have been able to do it. Now, over the the, the course of the pre-season, 
we've only used like 20 something players over the course of the preseason. But at the same time, it looks as if Brendan Rodgers has been able to teach them all about tactical awareness and all about positional sense and all about team awareness as well. Because not at any point through the game um, against Hearts did you see any player look around and go, Where am I meant to be, boss? They all went to where they were meant to be. They made a sub and the sub came on and went, and they all went, All right, we know where we're going. I know exactly where I'm going. And then when it came to uh, changing it again, it it happened. It just you probably didn't even like kind of realise it, um, because it, it took me having to watch it back when I went, oh, oh, oh that's how that happened. Because one minute we were as a flat back four, we went to a three, we went to a five, we went back to a four, and then back to a three, and then finally rested on a four. Well, it became like a kind of six at one point, but we interchanged that many times. And the players all, as I say, were all really aware of exactly where they should be. They all had their positions, they all had their jobs, and they all done it very, very well. So Brendan Rodgers is going to be, whether we have uh, 35 players to choose from or 25 players to choose from, Brendan Rodgers is going to have this tactical awareness installed in everybody in the team where he can get 100% out of them all the time and he can just say, today your left wing, but you will be left wing back, you will be left back, you will be in between, and you're going to be this position and that position, and you'll need to exchange with him and him, but then eventually you'll be changing with him and him, and I mean, that, that, and that's just rambling, but it makes sense in a footballing sense, where you can see the, when you can see the gaffer going, two, two, you two, you two, to the other people you go, oh, fucking, he's changing it again, no, he's making the tactical change to make that go, to make the, the change that was needed. And you've seen it happen. We went to a kind of flat back, well, it was like a kind of back five with changing the, the way the middle pointed out. It was it was just, it was wonderful to watch. If you watch it back, not just watching the football that's being played, but watch the manager, watch the, the team movement was just outstanding. And to be one, our first game in our actual season, um, in the actual Scottish SPFL Premiership, um, and then when you like, obviously we've not been, we've not really played that many games. To get this level of understanding out of the players already is just, is just superb. The next, the next reason why we won that game is Colo Turi. The guy has just got presence, commanding presence. He's got this dominance in the back line. And he reads the situation so, so well. Now, whether he could have gave away a penalty or not remains debatable, but I'll swap out that potential penalty for the one that wasn't a penalty. Um, and then we're even Stevens, aren't we? Um, but I've, to be honest with you, I, I, I thought it was quite a fair, a kind of fair tackle, maybe a wee bit kind of iffy. I've seen them given, seen them not given. And we've had our luck and had not had our luck with these type of things in the past. In the piece... Uh, the referee was kind of okay-ish, um, a couple of kind of questionable things, but 11 bookings throughout the game was quite severe. Some of the bookings were kind of strange. Um, I mean, if you pick up, if you think about Celtic, we get like two bookings for time wasting. Um, one for, um, one for like kind of talking back to the referee. You like we didn't really have any sort of like nastiness in, our, in us at all throughout the game we played our own football and that was quite good because at one point we looked as if we were trying to get kicked off the park but then I eventually just kind of slopped and slowed down and everything was okay again. Brown was properly good in the middle, um, done the job correct, fell back into defence when he had to and became part of a five um, and sat in a kind of deeper role when um, when, Owen when Owen O'Connell was pushed out to the, to the, the left hand side and you seen Scott Brown kind of slot in the back and Tierney pushed on into the, the kind of left mid position, if you like. Those type of things Scott Brown did really, really well. Um, he wasn't really asked to do too much more. Callum McGregor was outstanding. Um, and, and Griffiths was, was dynamic as always. Um, might not have got, like, done what he wanted to do, because no doubt he would want to get the ball in the back of the net. But to to be a provider the way he was for Sinclair was just, was just superb. So, I mean, we can take a lot of positives out of our first game. 
not only the positives of a three points, but also like two points above the the teams that are considered to be our closest rivals, um, which was obviously going to be Aberdeen and Hearts. So to get two points on on Aberdeen and to get three points on Hearts is absolutely superb. And if you if you think Club Twelve might challenge or not, then to get two points above Club Twelve already is is pretty good also. It's early days. Um, there will be swings and roundabouts this full season. There'll be ups and downs. I don't expect this. Well, I don't think it's. I don't think it's too unrealistic to want us to go the full season unbeaten. I know that's kind of thrown about a lot out there. There's now trebles and all that sort of shit. I don't want to get carried away. But at the same time, is when you've got a manager who looks like Brendan Rodgers and has got this. I don't mean that in a, like in a looks personal sense, I mean, looks like he's um, got the players behind him, the players are all understanding the the way that he, he seems to be, like, addressing the situations, it all seems to be pointing towards a very successful season um, and I, for one I'm looking forward to seeing what else happens in the future um, and it's all going to be good, but anyway, I think that's kind of going to do us for this one just now um, 12 minutes is a little bit long for these videos and apologies, I, I will try and kind of tweak them round about so that they're kind of half decent so that you can at least stay interested in it obviously the main topic Aidan McGeady, yes or no or what other position do you think we need to fill and who do you think would be sufficient to bring in to, to fulfil that position but anyway, I think I'm done thank you very much for your time, I'll catch you in the next one Hail hail, take it easy